Hello team and welcome in another episode of the very short series dedicated for handling files with the Databricks. Today we are going to learn how to read the data from files with SQL, with SQL, and this is going to be actually the last episode before a challenge. The plan of the game for today is we will see what is very simple way of reading data with SQL, then we will learn how to provide a bit of additional parameters, and at the end we are going to see how to insert data to existing table from a file, and that's it, it's going to be a short one. So let's get started. Options to read the data in SQL are very limited comparing to what we can do in PySpark. Also, we cannot do the second way around, so we cannot create a file with the SQL. Nevertheless, when we are working with the simple files, this works just fine. So let's say that we want to query this file, it's in the Databricks dataset, so everyone has it, and it's a simple CSV file where columns are separated with commas. This is how the file looks like. The very simple way of querying that file is just by writing select star from, and then we specify a type of the file, so in our case CSV dot and a backtick. This is not a single quote, this is a backtick. And then after the file, control enter. And it works like a charm, just with the exception that we have a typical for the CSV problem where the name of the col columns have been read as the first row. We will fix it later on. Before doing that, it's also very simple to read the whole folder. Just we are giving the path to the folder like this instead of a path to the specific file. And I have added a limit for it just to show you how easy it is to limit the number of the rows you can read. And the results are the same. And of course, the problems with the headers, this is very much something specific for the CSV, if we would like to query other types of the files like a JSON, well, the construction of the JSON is completely different and it's very obvious for the Databricks what is the name of the columns, so we don't have that problem here. The same would be with Parquet or with the data format like here. And now, once we know how to query a file, it's also very simple to create a table based on that query. It's enough to use something, what is frequently called as CITAS statement. C, like create, table, A, A, and S. This is also a common question on the interview. And starting from now, now on, we will have a new table available for us, which we can query or we can do whatever we want in the SQL moving forward. And if we describe that table and scroll down, we are going to see that this is actually a managed table, which we already know from the PySpark part. And this is a path to the files for the table. So users, Hive, Warehouse, and ng trips. We can, of course, query that path using the magic command fs, ls, and giving a path to that folder. And we are going to see one or more parquet files. In my case, two, two compressed parquet files and the delta log. We'll dive in into the delta format later on. But this is a very, very simple way of reading the data with, with the SQL. Just the problem is that there is really no control over how you are reading the data. You cannot control, for instance, and say that this is the name of the columns in SQL. Or as you can see here, Databricks has recognized or has guessed some types of the columns. But in the, this way, you don't have any control on the type of those columns. You need to rely on what Databricks has to offer to you. And here comes the second way of reading the data. So the second way is a bit more complex, but on the other hand, we have way more control. And let's get back to the first original file from that episode, simple CSV file, where the first row is the name of the columns, and the rest is a column separated with the commas, which is the, this is the content of the file. And what we want to do now, we want to read exactly the same file, but first of all, fix the problem of the header, and secondly, specify the column types. So have a control to specify what the column types we have in the file. And the way to do that is to use something what is called SQL DDL. And this is the typical way of creating the table at the beginning. We are writing create a table, name of the table, and then we are specifying column and the column time, column and the column time. So we know that already from the PySpark part. But, but moving forward, we are adding using CSV because that's our type of the file CSV and then we have a place to specify additional options so I'm adding options and in the bracket first of all header equals to true and this will fix our first problem and then I'm specifying a second option which in my case is optional because the CSV is separated with something standard 
it's a comma and delimiter equals to comma. This is in my case optional because again, this is comma is a standard way of saving CSV, but sometimes you will get a CSV where the columns are separated with something crazy. And then at the end, I'm adding location and location where the file exists. And this is another, the second way of creating a table in the SQL based on the files. And starting from now on, I can of course query that data. And as, as we can see, the, uh, the problem with the headers has been fixed, plus I have a control over the column types. Brilliant. But then if I describe the information about the table and I scroll down, I will see that I'm not any longer getting a managed table, but something what is classified by Databricks as external. And what does it mean? It means that the data hasn't been copied to the same location as we could see previously, but they remain in exactly original location. So they haven't been touched, they haven't been copied. And as the consequences, if I would drop that external table, this data, the data in that location will remain untouched. Whenever the, whenever the table is managed and I drop that table, the data from the folder specified in the location are also removed. So that was the second way of reading the data with the SQL. And the last part for today is to talk about inserting data to existing table. So let's say that you already created a table called IoT, you already got a file iotdevices.json and you have decided to register that as a table. If you query that table, we are going to see something around 200,000 records. But then let's say that you have received a new set of the data, which you want to add or maybe replace or re original one in already exist table. So let me copy that file to the new location and let's pretend that this is the new set of the data. And now you don't want to create a new table. You want to overwrite the original table with the new set of the data. And for this purpose, we can use insert overwrite and then the name of the table and the rest is the same. Select star from JSON and the path to the JSON, control enter, and then everything what was original in that table has been removed and the new data has been added. And here we have the information, number of affected rows. So this is basically how many rows have been removed and inserted rows that that's what have been added to the table. And if we see the count of that table, we, we will have exactly the same number. And the second scenario is when you will receive a new set of the data, but you don't want to overwrite the original one. You just want to add it on the top of the original one, like a second part of the data. Then we will use insert into. So previously, we were using insert overwrite and now we are using insert into and the rest is the same name of the table select star from that we already know and we have the information that number of affected rows but in this case it means that number of the added rows and if we count the number of the rows in our table we will see exactly twice as many as we had previously and that's it so at the beginning we spoken about the simple way of reading data with sql then we saw how to specify a couple of options especially header and delimiter. And at the end, we have learned how to add a data to existing table. So we will not always create a table from scratch. Sometimes we will be adding a data to existing table. And at the end, we can clean up after our, ourselves. So drop a table and that's it. And in the next episode, we are going to have a challenge, meaning couple exercises to make sure that we understand all the basics well. But this is the first challenge on our channel. So it's going to be simple. Cheers.